we're going to roll in 10, 10, 9, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2. Hey, everybody. Welcome to this episode of A Word With Words, the podcast. It's your girl, Bree Stories. It's A Tati. And it's MJM Kid. Yes, it is. You know it is. Mm -hmm. Uh, Well, today we're going to be talking about something deeply personal to me. Uh And it shouldn't take long. We're just going to have a discussion about it. And before we do that, we're going to break some ice. Okay. Excuse me. Sorry. So, if you had to smell like something Mm -hmm. that's in your kitchen, Mm. what would you like to smell like? That's in my kitchen. That's in the refrigerator. Um, and you have to, for the rest of your life. Sorry. Oh, oh, oh shit. No, no, oh, oh shit. No. Oh, for all time. Oh, shit. Um, yes. probably. Mine's is honey. Oh, good. Yeah, I was I thinking that. Honey. But I feel like though. I wouldn't like that after a while. Because mm-hmm. it's, it's kind of too rich for me. After a certain amount of time, I think. Um, maybe lemon pepper. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> but like not, if I can get like the actual lemon and pe- like lemon and peppercorn, like an herbier smell, not like <laughs> not lemon pepper <laughs> like seasoning. Some, some like sharks. sharks. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was thinking, like sharks. Yeah. No, like lemon, herb, and peppercorn. I think that's that would be sexy. Okay. Um, <laughs> Lemon zest, not herb. Does brown sugar have like a scent? Mm-hmm. I mean, it smells like brown mm-hmm. sugar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it smells like brown sugar. <laughs> it does. That's what her scent oh came to my God, mind, so that's why. A brown sugar like daddy? Like. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I like, like that. it. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. <laughs> Cool. Like Tati, would you like to check in? Okay. Uh, so physically, physically, I feel a little sleepy. Yeah. Because I can feel just like the top part of me like weighing down on my eyes mm-hmm. <laughs> right now. So mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I feel a little tired Absolutely. for sure. Um, emotionally, emotionally, I feel. Mm. Emotionally, I feel that's a good word like chaotic. Mm. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's great. And chaos. Yeah. And my attention is on the end of the summer, beginning of fall. I'm really excited for like September, October. Me too. Yeah. I don't want to get cold though. I'm so just so just September, October. Yeah. And then after that, can we just like start summer over again? <laughs> like That's that would be nice. I, I could even do November. I could do September, October, November. Yeah. And then let's just go back to June after yeah. that. <laughs> That'd be great. Idea. I'm into that. And spiritually, I feel. Mm, I feel blessed. Mhm. Mhm. Yeah. Physically. Yeah. <clears throat> I have a little pressure in my head here. Emotionally. I feel um soothed. I feel calm. I feel joy. My attention is currently on also September, October, mostly October spooky season. I'm like very ready for Halloween. Oh wow. I don't have any intentions or plans. I just want it to be Halloween season. Yeah. I love Halloween. Mm-hmm. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, and my attention is currently on, no, I just said that. Spiritually, <laughs> I'm feeling, um, spiritually, I'm feeling grateful. Yeah. Physically, um, let's see. I needed to stretch, so little muscles are tight. Yeah, tight muscles. Um, tight muscles. 
emotionally <laughs> the same word as Tati. I forgot what she said, but chaos, uh, chaotic, chaotic. Chaos. That's the one. Chaos. Um, my attention is on. I just have a lot of editing to do, so work. <laughs> mm-hmm. Work, 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 work. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> spiritually, I feel looked over. Mm. Yeah. Looked over or looked over? Um, like watched. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, not, yeah. I thought you meant okay. like skip. Yeah, yeah, I thought no. you meant like looked. <laughs> I was gonna be like, let's talk about that. Yeah, that's how we were. We were both like, oh. (laughs) Yeah, I was literally about to be like, let's talk about that. No, yeah, no, no. I'm I'm feeling I'm I'm being watched. I love it. Protected, covered, covered. Covered. Got it. Well, um, got it good. Some people know this, some people do not. But um, I recently made the decision to no longer drink alcohol. Mm -hmm. And it was. Um, I can feel myself getting activated already. It's going to be one of those episodes. Oh, Sorry in advance. Yeah. <laughs> um, it was, uh, it's been a long time coming. Yeah. Um, the urge to stop drinking full time has been coming about for a couple of years now. Mm-hmm. And <clears throat> the way that I wrote about it, it was like, I was being nudged at it, and all all of a sudden it felt like those nudges were becoming shoves, and Mm. now we're here. So by the time y'all are seeing this, it'll be about a month or, like, two days shy of a month. But as of right now, I just – I'm at two weeks since I pledged um, to remain sober. And so – It's interesting because I've been drinking. I started drinking when I was 14, and I don't remember. I I feel like I – so I had my first, like, real drink when I was 14, but by the time I was 16, I was drinking pretty consistently. So I was thinking about it earlier today, and I've always done fasts. I've always done, like, a 30-day fast. But I don't think since I started drinking – I don't think I've ever gone longer than, like, 60 days mm-hmm. without drinking alcohol. Right. And that's interesting <laughs> because I've always seen myself as – I've always considered myself a, a version of an alcoholic. Like, I've always been very – that's always felt very clear to me mm-hmm. because um, my relationship with alcohol is that I binge, but that is my relationship with consumption in general – um, just because of, I don't know, I guess, you know, depression or whatever. But I binge drank, and I would always go on these fasts as a way to ch- prove to myself, like, but you're not that kind. Like, you're not mm-hmm. dependent. Like, you don't need it, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and this pa- a couple of days ago was my first time feeling... It was my first time um, feeling like an addict, like dependent. Um, Y'all know I've done a lot of therapy and meditation. I've gotten very, very aware of my body and my inner experience. And so I was on the phone with my friend Ari. Hey, Ari. And I was Mm -hmm. just like noticing like my responses to stuff. And I was just like, I said out loud, I was like, I'm on a low frequency. I'm like, I don't know. I'm like, I feel like I got an attitude. I feel kind of like, just like vulnerable and like real snippy, like real quick to like, you know, I was just feeling myself just having like an attitude. Mm-hmm. And I didn't sit with it long until I sat down and I, oh, before that, the whole day, I was like, just very fixated on stuff. I'm like, oh, I need snacks. Like I needed to have, like, I'm like, oh, I don't have snacks in the house. Like, oh, I need to go to the store. Da, da, da. And then I was, like, talking to someone about, like, shrooms and, like, pills and, like, other stuff. I'm like, oh, I'm so curious of, like, I've never done, because, you know, I've, I've dabbled in recreational drugs and things, but I've never done anything on its own. Mm-hmm. So I was just like, oh, I'm so curious now that I'm not drinking. Like, what's that going to feel like, you know, if I ever do that stuff again, whatever. 
And when I made the connection that I was on a low frequency and feeling very snappy, I thought to myself, I'm like, I think I'm having a withdrawal. Because I'm, like, so fixated, like, I needed something. Like, at first I was like, oh, I got to go to the store. Like, I was about to just, I just needed chips or, like, chocolate. Like, you know, and then I, I had, like, an attitude. And then I felt really emotional. And, like, this is all, like, as soon as I made the first connection, it was like everything started to, like, wave in in, like, s- seven minutes. And I sat down in my notebook. I'm still on the phone with her, and I'm, like, writing stuff down, and I'm crying. And that helped. It did help me kind of, like, get back into my experience and just be like, this is what's happening. Like, you are having a hard time. <laughs> like, this is. You know, it was Friday. I had, you know, finished work. Like, usually, because I was feeling normal. The week before, I wasn't feeling normal. So, the first week, I had some stuff going on with my body where I wouldn't have been drinking anyway. So, this is my first time. Like, my body feels completely normal. Like, I feel mm-hmm. right. not sick. I feel okay. And I'm, I'm not getting a drink. I'm not, you know. And so, that was a very, very difficult realization it was it was a good realization because it really helped me be like wow I'm doing the right thing because I didn't know that I had that capability like I didn't know that I had that in me to like fiend you know like I need some like I can't have a drink then I need something else you know Mm -hmm. so I was able to kind of just be like okay and I um I had a kombucha and I sat on the couch and that that helped but I can't lie and say that that doesn't make me a little apprehensive and fearful because it's like, okay, like, what is this about to be like? Because when I first said, okay, I'm just not going to drink, I don't want to, it doesn't feel like it's in alignment with my values right now. It was just kind of like every other time I've said that, except I was trying to disconnect myself from a timeline so it wasn't like oh until this date until my birthday until my friend's birthday until the party until the thing it was just like I'm just not going to connect myself to the timeline I'm just going to tell myself I'm not drinking and that was my first time feeling like wow this is this might be hard like this might not be as smooth as I thought so do you think mm -hmm. that the reason why it was so do you think you had that feeling because it was connected to being, like, addicted to it? Or do you think you had that feeling just out of the fearfulness of, like, of the unknown? Like Mm -hmm. how you said in the past, you don't have those feelings because you know it's an end date. Yeah. You know? So do you think that that feeling could have just been the anxiety of just, like, this is just my new normal? Or actual, I'm fiending for this. Like, I need this, you know? It felt like a withdrawal. It felt like... It felt like dependency, and but it, and I was able to kind of pinpoint that through writing stuff down and just writing down my experience, what I was feeling in that moment, because like it was like I was on autopilot for a little while, which I'm so thankful for like my mindful practice because I don't stay on autopilot long. And as soon as I caught it, I'm like, why are you talking like that? Like, why do you have an attitude? Like, what? Like, and then I just started. It's like all the the whole day rushed in. Like I've been looking mm-hmm. for something all day. <laughs> like mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't have no chocolate. I don't have no candy. I don't like all day. I've been fixated yeah. on just needing something, mm-hmm. and so that's what made me feel like like that addictive feeling. Like I like I'm going through a withdrawal essentially. But once I was able to get all of that out, especially because I I don't like to be, but sometimes shame and pride play a role sometimes. And I am prideful enough to where I immediately, like when I wrote that down and like really like conceptualized the whole thing, I was like, bitch, Mm -hmm. (laughs) never that, like, gee, (laughs) like Mm -hmm. really? You and this bitch shaking and crying (laughs) because you can't have a drink? Like, so I immediately was able to be like, shit dead. Like like now you really, like, Mm -hmm. even if you was thinking like, oh, after a couple of months, like maybe I'll treat myself. No, shit dead because I don't even like that I have that in me. But that was what, it was very clear that that's what it was. I'm like, Mm -hmm. wow, this is me being faced with my dependency in a way that I never have before. Because I've never threatened myself with like, oh, you'll never have, like, you'll maybe never have this again. Like, maybe Mm -hmm. you'll, and then, (laughs) we love Beyonce, but... I was listening to her album the for the first time going going on a walk, and I'm just like, oh my god, this is such like a 
a part, you know, and it's like, I think that I, I have the capability of like being in party settings. I've done it a lot, but I think it's that thinking like, is this how we're going to do it forever? Mm-hmm. Like, even if it is, cause I told myself that I'm not going to feel good if I don't at least go a year. Mm-hmm. Like if I don't, if I don't make it to July 16th of 2023 <laughs> without having a drink, I told myself, like, that's, I'm going to, of course, I've learned to give myself grace and forgive myself yeah. quickly and right. stuff like that, but I'm not going to feel good about, good about that. Right. Mm-hmm. And so it was the thought of, like, you know, I've done this every once in a while a bunch in my, you know, I've always fasted and stuff like that, and I've gone out a couple times since I stopped, even the week that I decided um, Tyrone had his party and I went out the next day. So like I've been out, but it's like, this is going to be your new normal. Like you're never going to participate in the shots. You're never going to drink. You're never going to have a cocktail at dinner. You're never going to, you know, Mm -hmm. and that is really, really scary Mm -hmm. and not just scary, but also it makes me feel ashamed, you know, like it makes me feel a little bit like, damn, like what's wrong with me? Like, why can't I? Just have a normal connection or a normal relationship with this thing, you know, where it's just like I just do it on occasion and I do it and I know when to stop. Like, why can't I, you know, Mm -hmm. but um, and I'm sure that's going to come up throughout this whole process. But I'm I'm less worried about that. You know, I think that is really important. Um, I was telling this dude (laughs) that I've talked to often on y'all. Y'all know who, but. I, uh, it's this tarot card called uh, The Devil, right? Mm-hmm. And it's about um, unhealthy attachments. It's about, like, addictions, stuff like that. And I was telling him, like, every time I had that card come up in a reading, my very first thought would be alcohol. Like, mm-hmm. that would be my very first thought. And I would always push it down. I was like, and I blamed you a lot. I used to mm-hmm. always be like, nah. Spirit is telling me to stop fucking with this nigga. Uh-huh. <laughs> like, literally. Uh-huh. And, like, and it would, I mean, it, it would it would check out. Like, it would make sense. So yeah. I would always just make that the scapegoat. Right. Mm-hmm. Which is really shitty when you think about it. But, mm-hmm. um, but that realization, though, because how long have I been practicing tarot now? I started practicing tar- tarot on Imperial. So, like, five, six years now. Mm-hmm. That's been coming up for that long. That long, I, as soon as I learned what that card was, my very first thought was always, oh, I have a really unhealthy connection with alcohol. Mm-hmm. And then I would push it away immediately. Right. I would always be like, no, I don't have an unhealthy relationship with alcohol because I always fast. I, mm-hmm. I, I can always go without it. I, you know, I right. don't. And like you said, you said you don't drink every day. No. Yeah. And I never have. Mm-hmm. Never have. And um, which is why it's. I almost feel like I manifested this a little bit because even though I never drank on a regular basis, I still likened myself to an alcoholic because of the way I drank. Yeah. Because mm-hmm. I was never the type of person who, um, you know, I wasn't the, like, just to take the edge off type of girl when mm-hmm. it came to drink. Like, I'm drinking to get drunk, <laughs> like, every mm-hmm. time, you know? Mm-hmm. And so I always, whether it was jokingly or not, you know, like all jokes have some truth in them. And I would always liken myself to like, I would always be like, I am a tear of alcoholic. I'm just mm-hmm. not that kind of alcoholic. Mm-hmm. I don't like have to drink every day. Da, 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 da. But, um, but yeah, it's interesting. It's weird. It's very, very weird. Um, you know, I'm, I'm nervous about holidays. I'm nervous about, but I, I there's a lot of things about me that I can use to my advantage. I I have a a, a self righteous complex about me, and that's gonna help because I do like to be like oh, I don't drink, you know. Like I do like <laughs> right. to be that girl, like <laughs> mm-hmm. just like the one not doing what everyone else is doing, or like having to kind of like <laughs> shift the attention. Where it's just like, oh, are you able to make that a mocktail? Actually, <laughs> right. like, do you have that? Like, I just I'm not about to play with you. I do kind of <laughs> like. <laughs> I do like the smugness like, no. of it. And what? I think that's going to help. That's going to help. I'm going to need to lean on those things mm-hmm. when I'm feeling like, damn, I am the only one here not doing this. And I am, you, and like, not only to be the only one not doing it, but to be the one that usually, it, like, the girl. Like, yeah. you know, like, that people mm-hmm. look at me in party settings, and, and not even in party settings. People look at me here when we're recording, when at my house, at my mom's house, like, people just expect you know, like, that's what I'm giving. That's what I'm bringing that, you know. And so 
I think that this is an important shift for that reason, too, where it's just like me um, being okay with that and not being tied to my identity because it shouldn't be. It never should have been, you know? It never should have been like, oh, here come free stories. Here come free Harry. She got the drink. You know, it never should have been that. It should have just been a thing that I did, a thing that I enjoyed, but not Mm -hmm. this thing about me, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, So... I don't know. I am excited, though. I am looking forward to um, little things that I cling to. For instance, I've gotten so used to every time we go out to eat, I get a glass of wine. I get a cocktail. But, like, Cheesecake Factory got the best fucking strawberry lemonade in the world. I don't know the last time I went to Cheesecake Factory or um, Grand Lux and had a strawberry lemonade. I can't remember the last time I had a drink at any restaurant. That wasn't alcohol. Right. That's like, what I'm saying. I either like, just drink water and don't drink and don't get anything. And that's yeah. what that's another or, thing that I'm excited about because I don't right. buy well now I've been you know, to appease me, I'm buying like hella kombucha. It's like okay. I keep kombucha on deck at the house. Mm-hmm. And um also sparkling lemonade from Trader Joe's is fantastic. Mm-hmm. But other than that, like I don't buy pop and stuff. Like I don't have pop in my house. I'm not like a juice girl, and so I'm looking forward to like that being my treat when I go out. Like, ooh, like we had a restaurant. I'm gonna give me a coke. Like, you know, like give me a coke, Coca Cola. So I, there are little things that are kind of helping me. Um, and it's funny because before the other day when I had that moment of feeling like I was going through withdrawal, I was talking to someone about this app that I um, somebody put me on randomly literally like two months ago somebody that i follow was posting their updates on this app like oh i'm this many months sober right and i asked i'm like what is this app just out of curiosity two months ago not Mm -hmm. even thinking that i was ever gonna do that seriously but Mm -hmm. i asked about it they told me what the name of the app was and so a couple weeks ago when i like really made the decision i went back to my messages and found the name of the app and i downloaded it so and with the app you have to pledge every day so every morning you say Mm -hmm. so and when you first get on it you give a reason like this is the reason why i'm choosing to no longer drink so every morning they show you like i am not going to drink for this reason like yes or no right and you know, you say yes, and then at night you pledge again. You review it and say, did you keep your promise? Did you not drink? Yes or no. And so when I first got it, I was like, this is dramatic. Yeah. Like, this is not – I'm like, it's cute. I like – because that's also how I meditate. Like, I could e- – y'all know I meditate every day. I could easily just meditate. But I yeah. do it with the app because I like the milestone. I like seeing, like, oh, you've been – you've meditated every single day for 30 days straight oh, or right, 300 right, days right. straight So you can put anything in the app. And it no, doesn't have that, to be that particular app. No, oh. it's specifically for um, addiction. So, I think it, alcohol is like the main thing, but they also had a, a host. But it can of be other. addiction to. Can it be addiction to anything there? Maybe can it be like food or a maybe, person? Maybe they. Um, I feel like that's a cool. Yeah, I didn't look that deep because uh, the first one, the use. first the first option is alcohol, and then everything else said alcohol plus. But if you scroll down, maybe there is more. But no. it was like alcohol plus weed, alcohol plus pills, mm-hmm. whatever. Um, so I just pledged on alcohol, <laughs> though. Um, but, yeah, when I first did it, I was like, this is this extra. is a lot. Like, this is kind of mm-hmm. extra. But I was like, it's cute, though. I like it. You know, but That's then fun. Friday, because also when you do the review at night, you say, like, oh, how did you feel today? What did you do today? Mm-hmm. And Friday was my first night being like, this was hard. I didn't really feel good today. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. I did want to. I didn't, you know, it was right. difficult. So for those moments, I'm like, okay, this is the this is the right thing to keep at. But Yeah, I love that. Yeah, I, I think that that I we're think proud that of you. is I feel I feel like that app is like a great tool that like Absolutely. all people could use Absolutely. for whatever their, you know, like their vices or whatever mm-hmm. it is that they're trying to like stop doing it cuz I like that it's also holding you accountable and yeah. reminding you the reason why, why you, you made it. the decision. Yep. So if you said, I'm not doing this for such and such, when you wake up the next morning, like you have to reread it. Yep. Like you yeah. have to constantly reread it. And yeah. then like if you don't do it, you have to see 
you know, like the, like what you chose to let back into your life. And like, if I said, I'm not doing this because it brings me sadness and Mm -hmm. darkness or Mm -hmm. something. And then you do it and you have to be at that night. Like, I let sadness and darkness into my life. You know? Yeah. I like the accountability of that. The pledge that I I made, my my why was because I want to be present through all things. And that was one of the things that, um, that I wrote about when I made the decision was just that, like, I just want to be present. Like, um, the, Everything, but like one of the other things too. Like I was thinking to myself, like, how much sex have I had sober? Mm-hmm. Like, like my in my, um, like in my recollection, the things that I've gathered that I say like I I love about sex or or what I'm into. Like, how much of that is true? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, like based on the the state that I'm in. Like, how much am I? How many times am I really just allowing myself? to be in the experience of sex was like the main thing for me when I was thinking about that, but also everything, you know, like I already, my memory is not great. I don't have like a very vivid, vast memory of many, 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 many things from childhood on. And that's something that I want. I don't want any more hindrance to that. You know, like I have such amazing people in my life and it's like, we are, um, brilliant and we laugh a lot and it's like I want to feel those things like I want to feel them in my like I want to feel my actual body's responses when I'm around the people that I love and the people that make me feel good you know and not to say that I won't ever be able to do that while consuming alcohol but historically I haven't you know historically I have not been able to um to do Do you think do you feel like there is something Cause I know like you were saying you want to go a whole year and you feel like if you don't like that, you would be disappointed in yourself. Like yeah. if you don't make it for the year, but do you feel like, have you come to a place where you feel like, you know, that the problem is alcohol or do you feel like the problem that there is a problem that you have with something? Mm-hmm. And if you could figure out a way to get a hold of that thing, then alcohol wouldn't be a problem. That's that. That's it's it. that. So, yes. so if you were to, reach that point before where you right like do you still feel like you would feel you know bad feel disappointed yourself or would you just feel like I you know like I reached my goal or I you know I did what Mm -hmm. I what I was striving for um like I had said earlier even though I would be disappointed in myself it wouldn't last long like either because I just I'm not gonna Mm -hmm. allow myself to beat myself up I'm gonna forgive myself quickly so either way but I do think that right now the goal is still a year, mm-hmm. at least. Um, and to just really get a, I think that'll give me a good idea. A lot of different seasons, a lot of different experiences. It's yeah. like, okay, I'm going to have my first. For the past, I don't know how long, but every year for Christmas with all of our gifts, my mother has also gotten me a bottle of Maker's Mark and my brother a bottle of Hennessy because those are our drinks of choice, you know? Yeah. So, like, this would be the first year where – I'm going to probably have to remind her <laughs> right. request that that doesn't happen and, and mm-hmm. not drink mimosas on Christmas morning with my mama and like not drink on Thanksgiving after I'm done cooking. Like yeah. I, I kind of just want to experience all of those things. My birthday, um, the, the summer starting again next year, you know, like I kind of just want to experience all of those things. Um, just in my, yeah. in my own present state. Right. Yeah. That makes so, sense. Yeah, I think it'll be good. I think that, um, I don't know, it's just crazy. It's like, it really feels like an end of, of an era. Like, I, especially when I really, really, when I really think about, I'm very young. Like, I am 30 years old. And I have been drinking consistently for 14 <laughs> years. Like, yeah. mm-hmm. that's crazy, you know? Um, not crazy bad. It's just like wild. Like, wow, damn, yeah. like all of this time has gone by and so yeah. many experiences, so much, like so many things have I happened very late that I start don't with regret. Liquor. You know, I don't regret anything. Late, and I look but. back on those stories and even the really, 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 really bad ones that Lollapalooza shit and like stuff like, you know, really, mm-hmm. really dark times, um, of my, me and alcohol having like, a. a, a a toxic situation go on I don't regret any of that stuff because I know that this is a very important and pivotal point in my life that I would not have reached if yeah. it wasn't for all of that stuff so it's just it's just I don't know I'm I'm interested to see how I navigate dating without alcohol yeah. <laughs> because mm-hmm. that's just never been a thing it's always been you know let's go get a drink 
Yeah. And I'm not going to say no. I'm not. That's the thing. I like the idea of being a smug bitch, but like not unnecessarily. I'm not going to like meet a nigga and be like, oh, don't drink. Like I can go to a bar. (laughs) Like it's (laughs) you can drink. Like I don't want anybody to feel like handicapped in my presence or like, oh, it's not. I'm not that now. We we discovered a little dependency, but I'm not like that. I'm not. Right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? How does he hear me? I feel like I be having like the reverse. Like, as I got older and became an adult, like, mm-hmm. I feel like I strive to experience things drunk. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like <laughs> I've been doing, like, the reverse of things because I feel like I do so many things sober or prefer to be sober. And I have, like, a... I don't know. Like, I'm, I'm uncomfortable. Like, with you guys, mm-hmm. of course, or, like, the people that are closest to me, I'll drink or whatever, you know, at any time. But, like, how you said, like, dating. I rarely drink on dates, oh, you yeah. know, or, like, first dates and stuff. You know, like, it's not because I'm, I'm not comfortable. Or I feel like I have to be so, like, oh, yeah. 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 Or yeah. even, like, when, like, back in the day, like, when we was going to, like, the college parties and stuff like that. Yeah. I would decide that I, like, I would drink, but I always felt like I can't get drunk in here because I'm, like, look at my friends. I'm the responsible. <laughs> yeah, I'm, like, I'm, like, I have to pay. I'm, like, I have to pay attention. Then we were, like, you know, we're in downtown Chicago. That's when we're hopping on, like, the subways yeah, and exactly. catching the butt. You know, it was just so much happening. Around yeah. me during like during the peak years, everybody's college years where they're getting the drunkest. Yeah, I felt like it was so much happening around me that I felt like was unsafe. Yeah, that I would just be like, I can't be drunk. Yeah. Like if I'm gonna walk down this alley, right. I can't be drunk while I do it. Like right. I always right. felt like I, so it was as an adult, mm-hmm. like getting out of college and everything was when I started being like, okay, now it's time to get fucked up. Like, now we got cars and everybody has homes, right. you know, that I yeah. can, like, be in safely. Uh-huh. I'm like, so now I'm like, okay, now it's time to get fucked get up. Fucked now up. it's time to to be drunk and not feel, you know, as, like, uptight yeah. or something or feel, like, as nervous yeah. about stuff. Exactly. Like, you I feel like I do that now. That, mm-hmm. that, just, that gives me a lot of hope that, that the things that we value can take different shapes at different times because when you, as you reminisce on those college times, I f- remember how free I well, I didn't. Mm-hmm. We the rest, me and the rest of your friends, we didn't mm-hmm. give a fuck, which is why you had to be, you felt right. like you had to be so, like, Okay, let me be the one that's, you know, on the straight and arrow tonight because the rest of these niggas are just going to And I also whatever. love that, though, I about y'all. So it was like, you I didn't free. want anything to be any different. Yeah. Like, it would be like, I'm just going to live vicariously like, through them. Like, it would right. be like, so how was your night? Like, I was there. Okay. Yeah. But it would be like, what did you do? Yeah. Like, yeah. How was it for you? Like, what, yeah. what were you going through? Yeah. The, but, I, but I love that because with, with freedom being one of my values, like, that... I love that I experienced that type of freedom in that way. And this is just a different freedom. Mm -hmm. This is just a different type of freedom. And, like, me striving to be more present doesn't mean that I can't experience presence with alcohol down the line. You know, Mm -hmm. like, it just, I I, I love that. That just made made me Mm -hmm. really happy. And it's fun to always to be the one that, like, that wakes up, like, fresh every Baby. day. Yeah. That's, like, Even not, then. you know, like, that to, because that's also the thing when you say, Ooh. like, like this is my new normal or I'm never doing this again. It's, like, I'm also never going to be, like, hung never over. Never going to have a hangover. This whole year, you know, you'll be, like, ready to go and on top of your shit. Like, yeah, while right. everybody else will be, like, what time is it? Yeah. Like, like I don't feel well. That has been, that has definitely the been worst. something that's been driving me in these past um, couple of weeks, too, especially the day that I was having that feeling of, like, okay, and I go to sleep really early, mm-hmm. <laughs> like, really, really early. So Maybe you've been kicking it. So, I've been I catching you at random moments, and I'll be like, you're up. <laughs> I know. I have. I have. Mm-hmm. So, but I be catchy. No, yeah. but like the day that I was having that feeling, and when I finally like got let it all out, I was like, okay, I'm gonna pour me some kombucha. I'm gonna sit on the couch and I'm gonna listen to some music. And I did that, and I'm like, okay, I just gotta get to the nighttime because I'm gonna go to sleep eventually. Uh, right. And then when I did, and waking up the next day, it was like so worth it. Yes. It was mm-hmm. like okay, bet. Like you know. Yeah. Um. So that does that. That is. That is a motherfucking plus because my mornings, y'all know, I've spent years talking about how I've cultivated my morning Mm -hmm. routines. Yeah. And, like, that's so important to me. And it is a bummer when I do, 
you know, fuck up my meditation streak or, you know, I'm or doing it, but you don't want to do it. Yeah. Like yeah. you're struggling yeah, to do it or forcing uh, yourself to do, to do it. Struggling to do stuff. And, I, and this yeah. past week, I got back in the gym for the first time, like made that a part of my morning routine again and, and going outside for walks on the other days. And for the first time and I don't know how long, getting to the end of the week and looking at my list, like, wow, I do that shit every day. Because yeah. usually at some point, I'm going to have a drink and I'm mm-hmm. overdo it and <laughs> Maybe that next day I don't go for my walk, like I said, or maybe the right, next day right. I don't go to the gym, you know. So that does feel really, really. And you'll save rewarding. money. Oh so hell you'll yeah! You'll save so much money. So much money. Hell yeah! No, that's that um, that too. That as well. But you know, I'm gonna still be buying bottles for y'all because I love y'all. Oh, thank you. I nah, with y'all. <laughs> that's what this whole time. It's like you finally said the thing that he <laughs> was most concerned about. <laughs> like he's been listening to you. Like okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then you were like, but I'm still buy y'all bottles. He said, oh. Thank God. Okay. He's All like, right. where am I going to get my alcohol? Right. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. He's like, but is my standard bottle of tequila still going to be at your house when oh, I get there? Yeah. Like, are you going to keep no, that there for me? Okay, no, there will be. be no alcohol in my house. But if right. on your arrival, like if we planned it out. Uh, yeah. yeah. That's totally understandable. But I'm not going to have no. Just sitting there. Nope. Don't have it. Because if I had alcohol on Friday when I was feeling how I was feeling, who yeah, knows? Exactly. I don't know that I wouldn't have been like. We'll just whatever it. it's yeah. been two weeks you know like yeah, i don't exactly. know if i would have just so yeah yeah but um yeah that's pretty much it i just thought that it was really important I, I wrote about it and put it on the website but i also thought that this podcast like so much of the theme of this podcast for all these years has been based around yeah. that same freedom that that i've always exercised in, in in drinking and like being a fun girl and I'm still a fun girl. You're like being a fun girl. Like yeah. for real. Mm-hmm. Like I'm still a fun girl. I was you telling people. Are. I'm I'm probably even more willing to like go out and do stuff. And then like for some of my friends, y'all know who y'all are who like to do shit back to back. You wanna go to brunch right after we went out last night? Yeah. I'm gonna be the one like let's ready. go. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I'm probably gonna be more willing to get to to do things um under these circumstances. But yeah, I thought that it was really important that I talked about this here. Just because, um, yeah, I think it's important that y'all see all of our evolution. We're all growing, learning things about ourselves. And um, my only hope is that in my quest to heal, that I'm healing out loud. I'm not ever, I never, ever want to paint myself some sort of guru. Like, I'm telling y'all what y'all should do or in anything that I do. My morning message is nothing. Like, nothing that I say is at anybody directly. Everything that I say is for me first. And everything that I say to myself, I just hope trickles down and, and trickles across, not down, to other people um, who might need it, who might need to hear it, who might be going through something similar. So that's it, y'all. So we make sure that, that y'all, um, you know, if y'all want to send me some ritual or some, um, what is it called? Money. Three something. No. <laughs> Like, Money's always me. nice, but no, I, there are there are a lot of non-alcoholic brands out there um, yeah. that I'm looking to try. So if y'all are looking at this, send me a little care package if you want to. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, and I'll be doing that anyway. I probably I think I'll do like a little series of that on my TikTok because I've been doing like mukbang stuff on my TikTok. So I could do some taste test stuff for you girls if y'all don't want to oh, spend good. y'all money on non-alcoholic beverages just to try it. I'll do it for you. And I'll let you know how they taste. Not yeah. any non-alcoholic beer, though, because beer do not taste good enough for me to drink beer to not get a buzz. So, mm-hmm. not any non-alcoholic Gross. beers, but definitely um, a brand called Ritual and it's something else. It's called Three Something, Three Spice, Three Stories, something like that. But they do like herb infused. Oh, fun! Non-alcoholic cocktail drinks that are supposed to like boost your mood and stuff. Well, so. Make you drink. Well, not drunk. No, they just make you like feel good. So they have one called the Social Elixir, and it's supposed to. It has like herbs in it that um, they help you like feel more upbeat. So like if you have like social anxiety and stuff like that. So I'll be trying those things um, within the next coming months and things like that. But other cocaine. Um. (laughs) Would you try it? I (laughs) heard that it makes you feel upbeat. (laughs) Yeah, me too. I don't think cocaine, but um, and and uh, while I was fixated on on other drugs, I think that I proved to myself that I don't need to do nothing right now. Right. Mm -hmm. But I probably, but I'm I'm gonna go back to drugs for sure. (laughs) Like, let's be clear. Not cocaine. (laughs) I'm not not gonna specify. I'm not not gonna (laughs) specify. (laughs) But I'm definitely. Ooh, come on, guys. But um, just just not right now. I think I'm just. I think I'm gonna. Right. I'll probably. I'll probably do some. I'll probably do some drugs on my birthday. Like maybe I'll wait. 
mm. until then. Um, unless it's like, I don't know. I don't know. We'll see yeah, how we'll I feel see. about like weed there. and stuff. But I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, so that's about it. And thank y'all so much for dealing yes. with me crying as usual and stuff like that. You know, like things, things like, like that. that. Oh and um, <laughs> please continue to do all the things Jeez. that you've always done. Show us love. Follow us at Away With Words, the podcast on Instagram. You can follow me there at Bree.Stories, slowing down, and at Bree underscore stories on TwitTwat. And you can follow at A Tati on Instagram and at Hey Tati on TwitTwat. And you know already that you need to be following at MJM Kid and at Moments underscore Stew because all of the cool shit lives there. We love you so very much. And we're going to see you next week. Everybody say bye. Bye. Bye.